All right, welcome to your comprehensive study guide. Uh, I'm going to go through everything you need to know for your final. Uh, if there's some things that you already know and you don't need to review, I would advise you to fast forward through those. The ones that you struggle with, I would advise you to rewind and rewatch. Uh, so we're going to start with unit one, which was unit circle trig. So over here on the left, I have my unit circle. And our unit circle, remember, helps us to find trig functions. Uh, the sine and uh, cosine, uh, cosine is always x, sine is always y, and remember that tangent is always y over x or sine over cosine. So if we want to look for sine 30, then we go to 30 degrees, and on 30 degrees, sine is always the y coordinate so sine 30 is equal to 1 half. If we look at that same one and we look at cosine, cosine is always the x coordinate, which in this case is the square root of 3 over 2. And then tangent is y over x, or sine over cosine. So remember when we have a fraction over a fraction, we keep the top change it to multiplication, and then flip it. So once we flip the bottom, this goes away. Now if we multiply across, 2 and 2 cancel, I'm left with 1 over the square root of 3. Rationalize your denominator, and you get the square root of 3 over 3 as tangent 30. Now if you go through here, okay, uh, we can get all kinds of angles. These are the main angles that we always focus on, 30, 45, 60, and then, of course, the uh, quadrants of 0, 90, 270, 180. Uh, so we're just going to go through a couple of these. I'll leave the rest of them for you. The ones I want to focus on is I want to focus on uh, cosecant, okay? Remember, cosecant is 1 over sine, which is simply you're going to flip the y coordinate. So if we go to 45 degrees, which is right here, if we go to 45 degrees, the y coordinate is the square root of 2 over 2. Well, we want to flip it since it's cosine, so that's going to be 2 over the square root of 2. So once again, we rationalize the denominator, and what we end up with is 2, square roots of 2, over 2, the 2's cancel, and we're left with the square root of 2 only. So that would be cosecant. Uh, secant is cosine flipped, so we would do the same thing, which is going to get you the same coordinate because, remember, at 45, uh, all the 45 uh, degrees, that they're, they're, they're the same thing. And then cotangent is tangent flipped. Um, so in that case, you can figure out what tangent is and flip it. Uh, these down here at the bottom, 60's, those are the same. The ones I want to look at, let's look at zero. Okay, these are very important. Tangent zero. So here's zero, so here's the coordinate. Remember, tangent is y over x. So remember, zero over one is zero. Now, if we look at 90, if we look at tangent 90, tangent 90, the y coordinate is one over zero, which in this case is undefined because we can't divide by zero. So I'll leave the rest of uh, these for you to go through and practice with these on your own. Uh, make sure that you're rationalizing your denominator, putting the right coordinate over uh, the right function, and simplifying properly. All right, next thing we talked about is coterminal and reference. Remember, anywhere this unit circle is continuous, which means that it can continue to go around, which is 360, but it can also go around again, which is another 360, and you can continue on infinitely with that. So a coterminal angles are any angle in the same location plus 360 degrees. So if you think about 30, if we go 360 around again, that angle is also 390, and it's infinite. Now you can also, you can also go around in the other direction, which would be negative 360. So we can subtract 360 and get the same things. Reference angles are basically, you're looking for an acute angle formed by the terminal side and the horizontal. How we do that is we figure out what coordinate, what coordinate 
is, I mean, what angle, my, my bad, what angle is in which quadrant, and then we do, uh, we have these operations here. So in, if an angle is in quadrant one, it is the reference angle. If it's in quadrant two, if it's degree, we're going to do 180 minus it. If it's radian, we'll do pi minus the angle. If it's in quadrant three, so that means down here, all of these angles in, in uh, radians, uh, we'll do the angle minus 180 or the angle minus, uh, angle minus pi, or we can be in quadrant four, which tells us to do 360 minus the angle or two pi minus the angle, depending if it's degree or radians. All right, so let's look at coterminal angles. So coterminal, it says use coterminal angles, find the exact value, okay? So 405 is not on my unit circle. If we go around here and look, we can't find 405 anywhere on this unit circle. But if I take 405, let's get the pin here. If I take 405 and subtract 360, since it's a larger angle, if we subtract that, 405 minus 360 is going to be 45 degrees. 45 degrees is on my unit circle. So sine is the y coordinate. So that's going to be the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 495, same thing. It's not on my unit circle. So we're going to subtract. So 495 minus 360 would give me 135. So we're looking for cosine 135. So here's 135. Cosine is the x coordinate, negative square root of 2 over 2. Now, in these instances over here, we would need, since they're negative, we would need to add 2 pi since it's in radian. So negative 1 pi plus 2 pi equals pi. So go to pi. Tangent is y over x, which is 0 over negative 1, which is 0. Now, for reference angles, okay, for reference angles, if I'm looking for 300, 300 is down here. That is quadrant 4. So if we go back and look one, quadrant 4 tells me to 360 minus the angle. So if I do 360 minus 300, my reference angle is 60 degrees. When you have a negative, I'll leave 2.3 for you because that one ought to be pretty obvious. If I have a negative angle, we don't have any negatives on here, so I need to first find its coterminal angle to determine where on the unit circle it is. So since it's negative, we'll do negative 135 plus 360 is 225. Now, 225 is over here in quadrant 3. So let's refer back to our list. Quadrant 3 says to do the angle, the angle minus 180. So if I do 225 minus 180, my reference angle is then 45 degrees. Graphing sine and cosine. The main thing, you don't have to be able to graph, you've got to be able to get the information. So each letter represents something. So A, the first number, is amplitude. Okay, basically how high from the midline or how low from the midline the graph goes. B is the period, but we find the period by doing 2 pi over B. That basically tells you how far is it from peak to peak, okay, or from trough to trough, however you want to look at it. Phase shift is moving right and left. Remember, it's opposite of the sign in the middle. And then vertical shift is going to move your graph up or down off of the midline. So let's look at a problem. Our amplitude, let's start with our amplitude. So our first number is 2, so amplitude is 2. Now this number is B. So we got to do 2 pi over B. 2 divided by 2 is pi. So your period is pi. All right, your period is pi. Your phase shift, that says negative pi. So remember, we're always opposite. So our phase shift or our, our horizontal is going to be right pi. And then obviously our vertical shift is at the end, which means we're going up 3 because it's the same. Now over here, our amplitude is 4. There is a 1 right here. So if I do 2 pi over 1, anything divided by 1 is itself. So my period is 2 pi. 
opposite. So instead of it going right, we need to think of it as going left because it's always opposite of what the sign tells you. So left pi over 4, and since this is negative, we'll say down 2. So the main thing with graphing, you got to be able to get transformations from your equations. Law of sine and cosine, okay? Uh, we use law of sine when I have angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or side, side, angle. We use cosine when I have side, 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 or side, angle, side. And these are all the different variations of law of cosine depending on which one you need to use and which one you're solving for. Law of sines is simple because we only have one equation and we'll use that whenever. Remember, triangle angles equal 180. If we can add those up, we always get 180. When you're looking at your formula, lowercase is a side of the triangle, uppercase is an angle, and that works for both. All right, so let's look at an example. So we have a triangle here. So this first one's going to be law of sines. So if I set it up, I've got 21.6 over sine 102.4, because A and A go together. We don't have B. I don't have angle B. I don't have C, little c, but I have angle C. So the first thing I should notice is if I have two angles, which that's what I have, if we add those, so 102.4 and 16.7, if I'll add those two together, that's two angles, and I know that a triangle has three. So out of two angles, I got 119.1 degrees. So if we take 180, which is all three angles, and subtract the two that I have, that will give me the third angle, which is 60.9. So we know, based on our rules of triangles, just our characteristics of triangles, that this angle here will be uh, 60.9. So we'll get rid of this, and we'll say that the angle here is 60. Point nine. Now what you have to remember is you got to remember, all right, so when we look here, okay, we can solve for B or C, whichever one you want. So we're going to pick two ratios. I like to pick the two that were uh, given to me that I found with the triangle. So I know that 21.6 and 102.4 was given to me, so I like to use that one. So let's just pick those two. And what we're going to do here is we're going to cross multiply and solve for B. So if I cross multiply, that means little b times sine 102.4 equals 21.6. Juan Perez Prayer Perez to the attendant office to check out, please. So 21.6 times sine 16.7. Now what I can do is I can type this part into my calculator because there's no variable. So if we do Make sure you're in degree mode, first of all, 21.6 sine 16.7, okay? And if I divide that by sine 102, so sine 102.4, that's going to get B by itself. So while you have that in your calculator, just hit divide, sine 102.4, and what we get is we get 6.36. And that gives you B. Now, repeat the process for C. You can pick, so we know what B is now. We know B is, uh, what we say, 6.36. We know B is 6.36. So now what you can do is you can take this ratio and cross multiply these two to solve for C. I right, let's look at the one below that. So on the one below that, we don't have another, we only have one angle. So let's look at how to solve this one. We've got 8 over sine 36 equals 5 over sine B equals C over sine C. 